Okay, so it says, given, write a polynomial with the given root. This was on our final, wasn't it? This was on our final exam. Um, most of you did get it right. So, these are the given solutions. Do I need to add any solutions? I have a 2, I have a um, square root of 3, and a negative square root of 3. Aren't those conjugates taken care of there? Okay, so we were, we'd work backwards here. We have our x minus 2. A lot, most of you were able to at least get this part. x minus root 3 for that, and we'd add root 3, x plus root 3. Now, here's the thing. Remember that... <coughs> It's always smartest to multiply the conjugates together first. Otherwise, there's too much room for error. It's, you could still get it right, multiplying these two together, and then in the end, but it's going to be way harder. So focusing on this, we get x squared plus x root 3 minus x root 3 minus the root of 9. So that's x squared minus the root of 9, which is really x squared minus 3, right, everybody? Most of you were able to just plow right through this. And then we have our x minus 2 we can't forget about. So then we would double distribute that. So we would go x cubed minus 3x minus 2x squared and plus 6. So then in, our final answer would be in standard form. So it looks like this. And I would just want to see a raise of hands. Um, just how many of you officially did get it right? I did check many of yours. Okay, good. Awesome. Okay, write a polynomial with the given roots. So that's the same problem as this, correct? Notice it's written differently. We can't let things throw us off that are written differently. So that means we have x equals negative 1, x equals 3i, and do I need to add anything? Yes, what else? Good, the conjugate. So we also have to have negative 3i. If you have an imaginary solution, it's conjugate is also a solution. So now we work backwards. We have our x plus 1 times x minus 3i, times x plus 3i, and then we would double distribute, always multiplying the conjugates first. So I'm going to just do this in my head. x squared, um, and then we're going to have plus 3ix minus 3ix. So won't my middle terms cancel out? And then we're going to have minus 9i squared, which that piece simplifies to be x squared plus 9, correct? And then we have our x plus 1. Now, if anybody has any problems with why I changed it to that, I can explain if we need. But if we don't need, I'm not going to. Okay, <clears throat> then we would double distribute here, getting x cubed um, plus x squared minus 9x. No, plus 9x, right? And then plus 9. So I know a lot. How many of you got that one right? 100%. Good. If not, hopefully we're able to see what happened and we're all good. All right, also, at the end of the day, do not forget to hand in what's due today. If it's finished, if it's not, it's late. Um, hand it in. But you know what's worse to me than a late assignment? A hand it in, not finished assignment. That makes me way, way more mad. So keep that in mind. All right, so we're just going to review real quick from 7-1 to make sure we're good before we move forward. So you don't need to take notes. Just look up here. So it says, what is a polynomial shift from the parent function? So inward... What I want you to do is in your group, go through and talk about all these shifts, and then um, we'll talk about it as a group if necessary. If everybody gets it, we're just going to move on. Ready? Go. As a group, let's go. Um, I'm going to just pick a few random ones. What did you say the shift split was for this one? Right one? Compression of a half? Reflection over the x-axis. Okay, this is a absolute value function. You said... Right three, stretch of five, reflection over the x-axis. Now notice I gave you a function, and I did say that this could happen. I gave you a function you've never seen before, but don't we know that shifting for all functions works the same? So did you, were you guys able to determine the shifts for this one? Okay, what'd you say? Right three, up two, compression of a half, and you'd be right. And we this is an exponential function, e to the x, we haven't got to that unit yet. So um, I just wanted to see if you could extend your knowledge. Way to go. All right. Now, we have to be really good at knowing what functions look like and being able to tell, okay, that is a quadratic. That's a cubic. That's a cube root. So everybody just look up here, and as, we, as I talk about this, you've got to try, try to really get this down. So these ones are pretty easy. U's are quadratic. So this is an x squared equation, correct? That would be a parent function. 
This half u on its side, very good, you guys are remembering, is a square root function. That's the parent function. What's this? It's a cubic, actually. So it's an x cubed. So a tall snake is x cubed. A tall snake. Do you see that? Now this is a sideward facing snake. This is a cube root. So here's a little trick I used to help me remember. Do you see how that root kind of is on its side and looks kind of like that? That's how I kind of help remember. Oh, this is the one that's on its side. So tall snake, sideways snake. Okay. Um, this is a, does anyone know? Way to go, absolute value function, and this is a linear. You guys are so good. Okay, cool. So let's go backwards here, right? An equation of the polynomial, because really, guys, graphing is super easy. You know what I mean? Literally, you could just plot points. So graphing isn't what's really important. Being able to go backwards is what is. Write the equation of the polynomial. So you just said, what kind of function is this? Square root of x, right? Okay, now look, it normally started at 0, 0, correct? Think of the parent function. So we shifted left 5 up 1. I always just write it out in words. It helps me. Left 5 up 1. Let's look at if there's a stretch or compression. Now here's where you start. You always start where you normally would have started. So do you see how right here is my new starting point? I call it my new starting point. Okay, from there, we normally, if it's non-shifted, went... Over 1, up 1, with no stretch or compression. So this is going over 1, up 2. So it's vertically stretched up 2, correct? So it's a stretch of 2, and now it's easily written as a function. So 2 root x, mm, what? Plus 5, plus 1, right? Sign stays the same with the shift up and down. Way to go. Okay, so what kind of function is this? Cube root, right? Remember that this is the little trick we use? The sideward facing snake. So y is equal to the cube root of x is the parent function. So I always look and say, where did my shift go? So we normally were starting here, and we usually had a point here and here, and it snaked this way, right? So find that point that's been shifted. Isn't that going to be this point? So we shifted right 3, down 3. So right 3, down 3. And then let's see if there's a stretch or compression. Nope, and there's not a reflection either, right? Okay, so this would be y is equal to cube root of x minus 3 minus 3. Okay, I want you guys as a group on a whiteboard. Determine this one together. Go for it. All right, so this one was shifted. You said, well, first of all, this is an x cubed, the upward facing snake. You shifted left 5, down 3, like you said, left 5, down 3. And then notice, normally, we're like this, ding, ding, over 1, up 1. Notice, this one's over 1, up a half. So it's compressed down. That point's compressed down a half unit. So that would be 1 half x cubed. Well, we've got to change it to not be x cubed. There's a shift left and right. So that would be x, you said, plus 5 cubed, and then you guys said minus 3. Most of you, I think all of you, got it right. Way to go. So hopefully it's made it seem, um, it's seeming easier. Okay, this is the next really important thing, you guys. Um, really, uh, the other teachers aren't going over this, but this is hugely, hugely important, especially for those of you going on to pre-calculus next year. So they did talk about it in the packet one time. So I want you to go to your packet and go to... Problem 6 on 7-1. 6 on 7-1. Problem 6 on 7-1. And then just look back up here. This is not what we're looking This is not number 6 yet, but I just wanted you in the right spot. So I want you to look at the difference between this function and this function. Can anyone tell me, like, what is the difference in the two? Aren't they both shifts from the parent function? Is there one variable? Yeah, so they're both shifts from the same parent function, which would be y equals the square root of x. Now, what's the difference in the two? Can anyone tell me? Yeah. Joe, you're right on. One of them has a 4 in front of x, the other one's just x. Now, we've got to really watch out for this, because this is kind of almost a trick, not trick question, but this does affect your shift left and right. So everybody, this one is easy. We see that x has nothing in front of it. So it's simply left 2 and then up 1. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at this one, and we're going to say, let's just rewrite this. At, let's rewrite this. This 4 is a problem. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to factor that out. So underneath my radical, it's still under my radical. Out of each term, I'm going to pull out a 4. So let's pull out a 4. Now divide each term by 4. So what would be left inside my parentheses here? X plus 1. So this is technically the same thing as that, is it not? It is. Okay, so we have y is equal to. Now because this is multiplication, isn't it the same thing to say square root of 4 times square root of x plus 1? When they're multiplied apart, can't we put them together? So that means if they're together, we can pull them apart because it's multiplication. Does that make sense, everybody? So this is what we're really looking at. So let's simplify that. What is the square root of 4? 2 square root of x plus 1 and then our plus 1. So do you see how that fixed the problem? And now we would say, yep, and now we know it's actually a stretch. Does that make sense, everyone? So we would say left one up one stretch of two. So it's kind of like a, a shift in disguise. So a lot of people on accident will be like, oh, left four and not recognize that four. All right, so let's look at this one. Same, same deal here. So in this one, there's a 16. That's a problem. We're going to factor that out. But don't actually do this. This is what I see students do. They factor it out here. You can't do that. We're factoring it out under the radical because it is under the radical. So then x plus 1 was left again, correct? Mm -hmm. Minus 2. So now you would split that up. That's y is equal to the square root of 16 times the square root of x plus 1 minus 2. So we have 4 square roots of x plus 1 minus 2, and now it's a shift from the parent function. Everybody good? Yes. Yeah, good question. So if we had y is equal to the square root of 3x plus 7, let's go minus 1. We would factor out, we need to take care of that 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor out a 3. Left would be x, divide by 3, divide by 3. x plus 7 thirds, right? Isn't that true? Minus 1. So now we have y is equal to the square root of 3 times the square root of x plus 7 thirds minus 1. So we would be, say, a left shift of 7 thirds, and then you would look and calculate that decimal and see if it's greater than 1. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it wouldn't come out pretty, but that's exactly what we would do. So we would say left 7 thirds, the shift of left 7 thirds, because it didn't come out pretty. Okay, so what you're going to do is 7a and 7b. Now notice the difference in this two problems are they're cube roots. You're not going to be doing square roots, but think about it, guys. Extend your knowledge. Don't make me have to show you. Think about it. Isn't it the same idea? Okay, go for it then. Do these two. Do these two. Go. As a group or together, whatever. Write it down on your notes. That's 6A and 6B. Is this 64? Oh, that's 64. Gotcha. Okay. Let me get that fixed. Thank you very much. Okay, so use your packet and start doing those. Okay, write the shift from the parent function. I'm struggling. So, over here you see that there's a 64 in front. That's the only problem. We've got to fix it. So we have the cube root. We pull out a 64. Left would be x plus 2, right? And then we can split it apart. So we have y is equal to the cube root of 64 times the cube root of x plus 2. So that's really y is equal to 4 cube root of x plus 2. So we would say left 2 stretch 4 if we were going to describe it. Yes. Then you would just write it as the root of 2, for example. Um, if it was the root of 8, you would break it down and pull it out and write it nice and pretty, if that makes sense. Good question. All right, so looking at this one, we pulled out the 8, we factored out the 8. So then left was x minus 3 plus 1. So then that's the cube root of 8 times the cube root of x minus 3 plus 1. Cube root of 8 is 2. And then cube root of x minus 3 plus 1. So that would be our final answer, stretch 2, right 3, up 1. So what Margaret asked is let's pretend, let's change this to being a square root, a square root. 
So eight, square root of eight doesn't come out nicely. So what we would have done was broke it down, pulled out groups of two. So wouldn't that have been two square roots of two? So you would just call that a stretch of two root two. Does that make sense, everybody? Those are all really good questions. I'm glad you're asking. Okay, so as a group, go through and tell me what the stretch and compressions are. This is going to be on the test. I'm just going to say, describe the shift from the parent function. And if you don't look and notice that there's something wrong here that you need to fix, you're going to get it wrong. So ready, set, go. Okay, so we just, let's go through it. So we had quickly, you pulled out a 16, left was x minus 2, minus 3. So we got y is equal to, square root of 16 is 4, correct? Square root of x minus 2 minus 3. So we would say right 2, down 3, stretch 4, reflection over the x. How many of you want to write? Got it. Okay, sweet. Moving on. We have y is equal to, I was impressed that a lot of you didn't freak out. We're getting better at seeing something different and not like freaking out and using our math skills to just say, oh, I'm probably going to do this. So we have 2 times the cube root of, you pulled out 125, left was x plus 1. So then you have y is equal to 2 times the cube root of 25, 125, which was 5. So you had 10 cube roots of x plus 1. So you would say left 1, stretch of 10. I saw most of you get that one right. Way to go. So we have y is equal to, the 4 is the problem. You factored out a 4, left was x plus a half, and then plus 5. So then the square root of 4 came out nicely to be 2, x plus a half plus 5. So you'd say... Left a half, stretch a two, up five. Okay. And then same idea here, right? Okay. Moving on. All right, so what I want you to do is go to your homework for today, a new homework, and I want you to show me, you still know from yesterday how to graph 15 through 21. So you're going to flip to the back, start graphing, and then make sure you state the domain range. So I'm going to give you a minute to start on your homework for tonight. Just a reminder, really quick, of where we start with something like this. There's many ways of doing it, but remember, I really want you to not use a calculator for this, except for to maybe check your answer. So everybody, this is where I always start with graphing, is I say, okay, what parent function is this? A shift of? No. Cube root, of X, cube root, right? Make sure we say cube root. The cube root of X would be the parent function. So what are some original XY points? If I plug in... Negative 2, doesn't work, sorry. Plug in, negative 8, we get negative 2. We plug in, negative 1, we get negative 1. Plug in 0, we get 0. Plug in 1, we get 1. Plug in 2, we get, no, nothing. Plug in 8, we get 2. So these are the parent functions on points. And now we're stretching it by 4. That's the only transformation. Remember, that doesn't change your x values, correct? It only changes, it takes it and takes your y values and stretches them up or compresses them down. So we're taking our y values and multiplying them by 4, and voila, we have our new x, y points we can graph. That's one way of doing it. So our new points are negative 8, negative 8, correct? Negative 1, negative 4, 0, 0, still 0 times 4 is 0, 1, 4, these are just new x, y points, 8, and 6. Eight. So now plot those new points. Now understand, if you can't fit it on your graph, I would not expect you to actually plot those points. However, if those are points on the graph and you don't plot those right, if they fit on your graph and you don't put them, you're going to get it wrong on the test. So pay attention so that you do get it. If I asked you to graph this, you would know how, correct? It's a shift of right three, correct? The quadratic, correct, x squared, shift of right 3, up 2. So our parabola is usually at 0, 0, correct? So we will right 3, up 2. There's the bottom of our parabola. There's no stretch or compression, so this is pretty easy. Isn't our quadratic usually over 1, up 1? So now it's going right 1, 2, 3, up 1. So will this point be here? And then over 1, up 1, 2, 3, over 1, up 1, 2, 3. So this is what this parabola looks like. Now, my next question for you is, could you graph that if I said only graph that quadratic for x values greater than or equal to 3? What x values are those? What x values are greater than or equal to 3? Isn't 3 equal to 3? Isn't 4 greater than 3? 5, 6, 7, 8? So this way, correct? 
is what we're graphing. So if I said graph the quadratic for x values greater than 3, wouldn't you just erase this side? There's the quadratic for x values greater than 3. Does everybody understand? Okay, now I'm going to change. I'm going to draw back in my parabola. Okay. Now if I said to you, graph that parabola for x values less than 6, but greater than or equal to 1. No, 2. Let's go with 2. So if I said graph the quadratic, this quadratic for x values that are between 2 and 6, right? Isn't that x values between 2 and 6? So look, here's 2, here's 6. So we're going to keep the quadratic on that interval, correct? Okay, so I'm going to go here and erase. You saw I erased the parabola but kept it for that interval. No one's confused? Now I'm going to go over here. Oh, that wasn't even part. Okay, sweet. Um, that wasn't enough points to go. So I'm going to do this on purpose. So I'm going to erase. I wanted to show you. Let's make it a little bit less. Maybe let's do 5. So less than 5. So instead, I'm going to go like this. Five. Okay, boom, boom, boom. So right here, less than five would be that way, correct? So won't I be erasing all of that? Now look, there's the quadratic on an interval from less than or equal to two. So now because it's less than or ew, almost erased it. Because it's x values greater than, sorry, x values greater than two, that's this way, or equal to two, that is included, correct? But this is x values less than 5, not including 5. So isn't this function at 5 right here included? So we would open up the circle to say not including that 5 value. Everybody understand? Now, you just did a piecewise function. We just graphed a piecewise function, meaning we graphed a piece of a function. Is that everybody understand? Yes. So very easy. So everybody go to your notes 7, 2. We're doing 7, 2's lesson, and we're going to be able to go quick, hopefully. So, um, I said, so we're just graphing piecewise functions. That literally just means you take a piece of a graph, and that's all you graph. We're taking a piece of a function and graphing it. So notice in this um, example on, we're going to do this example. Can, did you guys all find it? On 7, 2. We're going to graph this. This is two functions put on the same picture, but we're only going to graph pieces of those functions. Does everybody understand? So what you're literally going to do is say, okay, I'm just going to focus on this first function. Let's graph y is equal to 2x minus 1. Everybody good? So let's graph 2x minus 1. How do we graph a line? You go down 1, correct? Y-intercept, slope of 2, right? So you go up 2 over 1. You should be graphing this on your paper. Up 2 over 1. Oh, it's, oh it doesn't? Let me see. Okay, cool. So let's not, I'm going to graph it. You guys just watch. Sorry. Okay, so we're going up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, right? Down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. Cool. I'm going to draw that line in. But this is only a piece. We're only graphing a piece of this line. We're graphing it for x values less than 1 or below 1. Isn't that less than 1? So here is my x value 1, correct? Let me show you. X value of 1. Right, less than or equal to. So less than one, we're graphing, we're keeping it for x values less than one, right? Does everybody understand? So wouldn't that mean that I need to erase this side? We're only drawing in a piece for x values less than one. Does everybody understand? Now it's, or including one. So we would look at, where's my function at one right there? So we've got to have it a closed circle because it includes one. Is everybody good? Okay, hey, now just ignore that function. Pretend it's not there. Literally just pretend it is not even there. Now we're going to graph this line. y is equal to 3x plus 1. So we would go up 1, correct? And then it's a slope of 3. Up 1, 2, sorry, from here. Up 1, 2, 3 over 1. Up 1, 2, 3 over 1. And then down 1, 2, 3 over 1, and so on. But we're only graphing that line for x values that are greater than 1. So wouldn't that be this side of 1? So start at 1, go to 1. Isn't that where my function is at 1? We're only graphing greater than 1, so that's this side. So now I'm going to erase those dots because we're not graphing below. 
And then it's not including one, correct? Just x values greater than one. So go to the red function for x values just greater than one not including. So I put an open circle. That's all you have to do. Does everybody understand? Now notice something. This is a function. If I ask you, and I've seen this on ACTs, and I've seen this on end of low tests, they say, is this a function? So what you've got to determine is the vertical line test work. Does it ever have a gap or a break? Yes. But we have one is an answer. Uh, so inputs, all of our inputs, um, going to one. One is closed off here and open here, correct? So it's still a function. Because um, if I put, if this red thing was over here, for example, do you see how there's a big gap where there's no function? Or if I closed this off, if this was also included, so if I close this off, do you see how there's two y values for one x value? That makes it not a function. That's why this is considered not a function. Do you see how it doesn't pass the vertical line test? Because if I go like this, it hits two y values at one x. Does that make sense, everybody? So this would be not a function right here if it was closed off or a gap. But luckily, it is a function. Boom, boom. They're both open, not a function, because at that value, there's just a big hole. Does that make sense? Good questions. Okay, well, let's do another one. So, everybody, um, look at 1A on your work. So, it says, oh, now, I just want to show you this. If, if I said to you, what's the function? So, watch how easy this is. If I said to you, okay, fine, because this is the function, right? If I said find f of 2, couldn't we just go over to 2 and say our function is 7, correct? Isn't that my answer? f of 2 is 7. So if I said find f at negative 2, what, go to negative 2, what's my function at? Negative 5. Does everybody see how easy that is? Okay. So looking at this one here, we're going to just, it literally wants us just to evaluate it. So we could graph it. Let's practice graphing this one and then evaluating it. And then I'll show you another way that's easy that you can use to not graph it. All right, so let's graph this one. Um, you don't have a thing to graph, so I'm just going to graph it. Let's laugh, graph it together. You ready? So x squared minus 1, isn't that a quadratic? You're just focusing on graphing x squared minus 1. Shifted down 1, correct, everybody? So then we're going over 1, up 1. Over 1, up 1, right? Quadratics, guys? Yes. Over 1, up 1, 2, 3. Over 1, up 1, 2, 3. Over 1, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Just... I know the pattern over one up one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this is my parabola, but we're only going to graph that for x values less than or equal to two. So we're going to erase above two, correct? Does everybody understand? Okay, and it's or equal to, so look, go to two, go up, make sure it's a closed circle. All right, there's my quadratic. Now let's graph this line for x values greater than 2. So you got to just start at the origin, graph it like a normal old line, 4x plus 1. So we go right here, up 1, then up 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1, up 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. Something like that, right? Did I mess up anywhere? And then we can go down 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. But we're only going to graph that line for x values above 2, greater than 2. There's 2, correct? So go up and locate it. So it's, it's off my graph. It was at this point right here. So x values, so it was going up this way, correct? Okay. So I'm going to erase that, erase that, erase that. Okay. So look. Boom. Okay, we're good. Now it wasn't including 2. Now here's where I had a hint that something was wrong. Closed off circle. Do you see how I have another closed off circle? I looked and said, oh, one of them wasn't closed off. That one, right? So I got to open that one up. Otherwise, it wasn't a function. Everybody understand? Okay, so now if I said to you, let's do this. Find f of 0, what would you say the answer is? That means what's my function at 0? Negative 1. Now look how we could have done it besides even having it graph. If I said to you, find f of negative 1, do you see how in the piecewise function, we would need to plug it into this function. Because isn't that x value going to be on this interval for x values less than or equal to 2? Isn't 0 less than or equal to 2? So that's why we know we plug it in here. Look, 0 squared minus 1 is negative 1. Do you see how you can solve it graphically or just plugging it in? Okay, so f of 2. Let's use our graph. 
So my function at 2, so I go over to 2, what is it going to be? 3. So we get 3. You're writing this down. Now here's how else you could have done it. You'd look at the function and say, which one should I be plugging it into? X value is greater than or equal to 2. Wasn't that a 2? So we would plug it in here again. 2 squared minus 1 is 3. You see how to do it without the graph? Say that again? Okay. So f of 2, isn't that an x value of 2? Right? f of x? So that means we're plugging into into our function. So do we plug it into the quadratic or this? Well, let's look. The quadratic is our answer for x values less than or equal to 2. So we know that that's the one we've got to plug it into because x was 2. Does that make sense? So this one, f of 4, let's not even look at our graph. Let's just use this. So we're doing f of 4. That means plug in 4. But are we plugging it into the quadratic? No, because no, it's x values less than or equal to 2. We're going to plug it in here because x values greater than 2 is where we're is this interval. Does that make sense, everybody? So you'd say 4 times 4 is? 16 plus 1 is? 17. You got it. Okay, awesome. Okay, do we... I don't think... Let's just do this one. Let's practice. So, 1B, it says find f of negative 4. So notice we have three functions. Notice this function is on this interval. It's between negative 5 and negative 1. We're going to have this function on this interval between negative 1 and 3. And we're going to have this function for x values greater than 3. Let's not graph it. Let's just go through and answer this. So it says find f of negative 4. So look, f of negative 4. We're plugging in negative 4. Which one should I plug it into? Negative 4 is between negative 5 and negative 1, isn't it? So shouldn't we be plugging it into the top one? Okay, so we would say negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. Questions on that? Okay, now we're going to do f of 0. Now look, which interval does that fall? This one, right? Isn't negative 1 to 3? Isn't 0 in between negative 1 and 3, guys? So we've got to plug it in here. So that would be 0 minus 1, which is negative 1. Now let's do f of 3. Which interval is that? This one, right? Equal to 3. So once again, plug in 3 minus 1, and we get 2. F of 18, x, that's an x value way greater than 3, right? So 2 times 18 is 36. Good. Okay, awesome. 3A, do you guys need to graph more of these? No? Okay. How about you don't need to do 3D? You would know how to graph an absolute value function and the piecewise, you're sure? No, nothing's different. You just graph it and erase what you're not keeping. Does that make sense? Let's go this way. Um, I do want to do number three on your homework with you. Maybe that will be enough. One more example, number three. So go to number three on your homework. We still have plenty of time, so we shouldn't feel rushed. We have 20 minutes left of class. So let's do number three on the homework. So here we go. We're going to graph it together. So first of all, we're graphing this quadratic, y equals x squared, right? So it's a non-shifted quadratic. So here we go. You're all doing it. Zero, zero is a point. Over one, up one. Negative one, up one, right? Plug in 2, we get out. Guys, plug in 2, we get out. 4, do we all know what we're doing here? Plug in negative 2, we get out. Positive 4, right? Let's plug in 3, we get 9. I'm just going to go a little bit further. So plug in negative 3, we get out 9. Okay, cool. So there's my, I'm just going to put dots. We're keeping that for x values less than 1. X values less than 1 below 1, correct? Yes. So erase above 1. So look, here's 1. Notice, some people like to highlight. I have in secondary 2 them highlight that so that it's easy for them to erase. But really, you're not going to have a highlighter when you go to your ACT. So if you can do it without, that's probably going to be more beneficial for you. So we're keeping it for x values below 1. So that means we're erasing all those dots, right? Okay, awesome. So now this dotted line is helpful, um, and you could draw that on your ACT. So now we're drawing in that. So I checked off that one. Sweet, let's move on. Now we're graphing. I'm going to change colors. We're going to graph y is equal to negative 2. So guys, what you need to think of this as is y is equal to, isn't this 0x's? Minus 2. So our y-intercept is? Negative 2, so go down to negative 2, just put a point. 
Now, that means we have a zero slope. So we're not going up at all. We're not going up at all. Does everybody understand? So we're going up zero over one. 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 Zero over one. Zero over one. Okay? Okay. So now it says you're keeping that for values, for x values between greater than or equal to one but less than four. So that just means x values between four and one. So locate four, locate one. Ding, ding. We're keeping those dots between that interval. Does everybody understand? We can go back through and open up a circle in a second. Erase all those other dots. So now it's for x values greater than or equal to one. So go to one, it includes one. The function at one is included. Now it's not including the function at four. So go to four, go down to the function and open up your circle. Now guess what I did up here at x squared? You only have a closed circle for one on accident on the pink quadratic. But on the quadratic, look, on the quadratic it didn't include one. So I'm gonna go back to my quadratic and at one, I'm gonna open it. Everybody good? A hint that something was wrong was that I saw that it wasn't a function. Does that make sense? That's when I was like, oh, did I forget something? Okay, let's move on to the next piece here. Now we're going to graph y is equal to the square root of x. That's a non-shifted parent function. So plug in 0, we get 0, right? Plug in 1, we get 1. Plug in 2, we get a decimal. Plug in 3, we get a decimal. Plug in 4, what's the square root of 4? 2. What's the square root of 5? Decimal 6, 7, 8, still a decimal 9. 16 is going to be the next nice one, right? No, square root of 9. Square root of 9 is, let's grab that point, up 3. So square uh, over 9, up 3, right there. So now we're keeping that for x values greater than or equal to 4. So locate 4, look, there's 4. We're creep keeping those dots for x values greater than 4. So that's going to look like that. As, at, or including 4, so close dot. And then I'm going to make sure to just erase any other dots I had. And all is well. That's what it looks like. Is it a function? Yes. Look, open circle, close circle, so we're good. Open circle, close circle, and then the rest is continuing. Everybody good with that? Okay. Sweet. Okay, I do want you to be able, you do need to go backwards, so everybody go to 2A on the notes. There's not any practice on your homework, which I hate, but you will see it on the test, so everybody, Let's go backwards. I'm down to my last two examples, and then you're going to have 15 minutes left of class to work. So everybody stick with me. So 2A on the notes. If I said to you, write the piecewise function, you would do this. First of all, we have two different functions, correct? What is this first function? It's a line, correct? Y is equal to X is a line. There's the parent function. This has been shifted up 3, correct? So plus 3. And then our slope is down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, right? So that's a reflection over the x, so that's negative 1 there. So that's one of our functions. y is equal to negative x plus 3. Now, are we only graphing that function for x values? Look, x is 1. Look, x value is less than 1. Isn't this below 1, guys? The function was kept below 1. So aren't these all the x values that are less than 1? So you're keeping that for x values less than 1. Did it include the function at 1? Nope, so it's just less than 1. Does everybody see how I did that? The next thing you'd say, I have another function here. It's a quadratic, isn't it? The quadratic. Okay, so we know that that's y equals x squared. Let's check to see if it was shifted. Okay, <clears throat> shifted. If Wouldn't this come up this way? Guys, right? so it was shifted right 1, correct? So right one was the shift, and then was there a stretch? Over one up one, no, nope. correct? So we were simply looking at y is equal to x minus one squared. Now we're keeping that for x values greater than one. Look, one, two, three, four, five, so it was kept for x values that were larger than one or equal to one. So you would write it like this. Our function f of x was two pieces of functions. The first function was negative x, plus 3 for x values less than 1. Our second function was x minus 1 squared for x values greater than or equal to 1. Does that make sense, everybody? OK, 
Okay, how about you guys? Give that one a try. Really, let's see if you can do it. It will be on the test, so just because it's not on your homework doesn't mean it's super important, because I'm going to put one like this on the test. So, isn't there three different functions in this one? Yes. There's this straight line here. There's a quadratic here, and then a straight line there. See if you can figure that one out. And that was 1B. And you know what I'm going to do? Because this is not a function. Do you see how there's a split here? I think the teacher that made that messed up, I think this should have been over here to make it a function. Does that make sense how there's a gap? So there shouldn't be. So I'm going to do this instead. So follow maybe my picture up here or pictures on your paper. Um, yeah. That's what I think the teacher meant to do. I think they didn't pay very close attention. Okay. So write that function. Ready, go. Okay, let's talk about this one. Like I said, this is more important to be able to go backwards. So for this, it was a line, correct? So I'm going to put in f of x is equal to, for that piece, it was a line that was at 0 with the slope of 0. So we kept that for x values. I need more room. Ah, I need more room. I act like it's the end of the world. 0. For x values greater than or equal to negative 5, but less than or equal to negative 2. How many of you got that part right at least? Okay, good. The next piece was a quadratic that was reflected over the x-axis and shifted up 4. So negative x squared plus 4. You kept that for x values for x values greater than negative 2, but less than or equal to 1. Now notice something. I have an equal sign on my negative 2, so I can't put an equal sign again on negative 2. Does that make sense? So it, it wouldn't have been wrong to erase that equal sign and put the equal sign down here. Because it's closed up technically. It starts and ends right there. Okay. Next thing is this line. That tends to be the hardest for people. So notice if I was to continue this line up and over, then that would be a y-intercept of positive 2 plus 2. And then we have a slope of down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. So negative x plus 2, but we only kept it for x values greater than, not including 1. Does anybody have any questions on that? Could you read, Could you do one like that again? Okay, we'll make sure to try to keep practicing those. Like, you know. Okay, yes? So, that's really, um, greater than 1, but it's Uh, oh, I didn't, sorry, I was thinking that this continued forever. But you're right, it stops at 5, right? So I should have said, my fault, um, I just looked at this and thought, okay, it's continuing now. So you're right, it was actually x values um, greater than 1, but less than or equal to 5. My fault completely. Okay. I just got to look a little bit more carefully. Okay, cool. So, the rest of the time is yours. So, you're going to work on finishing that homework. If not, take it home for homework. Come get help.